Good morning. Welcome to our worship service for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Uh, we're already at the fourth Sunday in Advent, which means that uh, when we next meet, it will be Christmas, Christmas Eve. Uh, the Christmas Eve schedule has uh, been uh, up on the screen. It's there now. Uh, Thursday night, uh, the service here is at 630 there are also services at St. Paul, Hanover. Uh, their Sunday school children's service is at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. And then the candlelight service this year is at Emmanuel at 9.30 on Christmas Eve. So uh, lots of choices to worship. There's also Christmas Day communion service. The only communion service for Christmas is Christmas Day at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, Today, being the third Sunday of December, as well as the fourth Sunday in Advent, uh, it is uh, the day for our uh, offering, uh, free will offering for the uh, Hispanic ministry. So that will be out uh, on, on the table at the uh, back in, at the end. And also back there today are offering envelopes for 2021. So you can pick up yours today there as well. Um, in lieu of our... Sunday school uh, Christmas program, which is usually on a Sunday night, uh, the Sunday school children are going to be participating in today's service. Uh, they will be coming in on the first hymn, and then they will have the first verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We will sing the second and third verses with them. Uh, and then later on in the service, uh, when I read the gospel lesson, they will be acting it out. So they'll be doing the Christmas pageant that way this year. Um, let's see, is there, oh, my other, I think, uh, the other announcements are in the bulletin. If you have it, I didn't bring my bulletin with me. It's up in the pulpit. Uh, maybe when I get there, I'll look at it. And if there's something that I missed, I'll announce it. But, um, I think, I think I've covered what I needed to cover. There are still, uh, I guess there are so, still after taking, uh, gift boxes to Hanover last night. There are some LYF gift boxes left. Uh, so if you would like one, uh, they are available downstairs. Uh, oh, and one more thing. At the end of the service, uh, the Sunday school children, there will be treat bags for them. They will be at the entrance to the fellowship hall, the, the uh, east entrance to the fellowship hall. So go down and get treat bags for your children uh, make sure they get one, uh, and that includes children who are not participating in the in the Christmas pageant here too. So, okay, so there there are treat bags for all the children. Hey, I think that is it. Um, I can't use one of you because you have you have rolls there. You know how to do this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the right arrow there. Whenever, whenever the screen changes, okay, but I gotta, I gotta set it up here first. Whoops. Okay, now it's, it's at the first one. Okay, first hymn is number three fifty nine. Lo, how a rose air blooming.
show God's love aright. She bore to us a Savior when half spent was the night. This flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hailed incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his ring. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The epistle for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. We'll have, we'll have you remain seated. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. Oops, I'm sorry, that's the wrong gospel. <laughs> In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. 
and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, let us stand as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we continue with the singing of the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 357. spring from on high and 
cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and as dark shadows put to flight, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God on which we base our meditation this morning is the epistle lesson from uh, today. I will read it again from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore, through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, how many of you remember what it was like to be a child on December 24th, Christmas Eve. You've been waiting for Christmas, and it's almost here. I remember one particular Christmas. I don't remember how old I was, maybe 10 or 11. Every year at Christmas, the family would go to church on Christmas Eve, and then often some friends would come over for a little supper, and finally my brothers and I would go to bed. We usually didn't sleep too well, and we were sure up early, but when we got downstairs on Christmas morning, there would be all the presents under the tree and our Christmas stocking filled with candy and football cards. That was always on the Christmas list. But this particular Christmas, something unexpected happened. This Christmas, Santa arrived early. We came back from Christmas, from church on Christmas Eve, and there were all the presents and the full stockings and everything. Our wait was over, almost. I think our friends may still have come over and we had to wait to open the presents, but that was all that was left. We got to open one present that Christmas Eve and we saved the rest till Christmas morning so we could still have the excitement of opening presents on Christmas Day. The wait was almost over. Christmas had begun. That's where we are in the church year today. It's the fourth Sunday in Advent. The wait is almost over. We are right at the point where we are about to celebrate our Savior's birth, the miracle of Christmas, God becoming man for our salvation. The children have acted out the Christmas story for us today. All that's left is to come to church on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and hear the message of the angels. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. In Advent, the church is waiting for something else as well. We are waiting for Jesus, our Emmanuel, to come again. The one who has ransomed captive Israel, the one who gives his people victory over the grave, the one who by his first coming 2,000 years ago, his death and resurrection has opened wide our heavenly home. He is coming to take his church, his baptized people, to heaven with him. That's all that's left. Everything else for our eternal salvation has been accomplished at his first coming. And so the church waits in faith. We wait in hope. The wait is almost over. We can feel the excitement as Christmas draws near. Jesus is coming and bringing our final salvation. 
it wouldn't be quite accurate to say that 2,000 years ago the world was on edge like a child on Christmas Eve, but God's people were waiting for the day when he would send the promised Savior, the Messiah or Christ. God's people knew of his promised coming. They knew some things about him. They knew a child would be born to a virgin and he would be given the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. They knew that this child would also be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. They knew that the Savior would come from the line of David and that he would be born in David's town, Bethlehem. But still, the Savior's coming was shrouded in mystery. Who would he be? When would he come? How would people know him? There were a lot of things God hadn't revealed yet. Our epistle lesson speaks of the mystery which was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations. The mystery has been revealed. We now know what the prophets were talking about. Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, has become true man, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To suffer and die for the sins of the world so that young and old, Jew and Gentile, male and female, you and I can have a place in heaven. It's like that first present being opened on Christmas Eve. The wait is almost over. Christmas has begun. God's people were seeing the promise fulfilled. The unveiling of the mystery began with a visit by the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary living in Nazareth. The account of Gabriel's visit is the, the appointed gospel for the fourth Sunday in Advent, sort of got preempted today by our Sunday school pageant, but it's perfect for the last Sunday in Advent because it's the beginning of the end. The end of our wait. The mystery is being revealed. The town of Nazareth still exists today. And in Nazareth today, there is a church which claims to be at the site where Gabriel came to visit Mary. Now, there are many such churches in the Holy Land, and we have no way of knowing whether they are built on the exact sites where events happened. But in a corner of the church, underground, there is a room where it is it, which is supposedly the room where Mary w was when Gabriel appeared. And in the room is this inscription. Here, the word became flesh. This is where it all began. As Gabriel spoke, speaks the words to Mary, as he, <coughs> excuse me, as he tells her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, it happened. God's word does what it says. Jesus is conceived in the fulfillment <coughs> of God's plan. The fulfillment of all those promises of a Savior in the Old Testament is set in motion. The wait <coughs> is over. God's time has come. The details of the mystery would be revealed. God's plan unfolds little by little. <coughs> the child will be, will be named Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The child will be holy, the Son of God, sinless so that he can redeem sinners. The shepherds will find this child in a manger, for he comes to eat for even the lowly. The child will experience hatred from Herod, persecution from Pharisees and Sadducees, and rejection from his own people. The child will experience suffering and death at the hands of both Jews and Roman Gentiles, all to redeem both Jews and Gentiles from suffering and eternal death. The child, the seed of the woman, descended from Eve and son of Mary, will crush the head of the serpent Satan and reverse the curse of Adam by his death and resurrection. And it begins now. God's time has come. Everything is set in motion with the visit of Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, it's all going to happen. We will be saved. That was 2,000 years ago. The mystery has now been more fully revealed. Through the gospel message handed down to us by eyewitnesses, we now know that Jesus is the promised Savior. We know what he has done to save us. His birth, his cross, his empty tomb, all of that is history now. All we are waiting for is our final deliverance to heaven. 
and the wait is almost over. Now, we must wait in faith, and sometimes our faith is, can be on shaky ground. The last few moments of the wait are often the hardest and most stressful. The last few days before school gets out, the last hours before surgery, the last week before the wedding, the last few minutes before the job interview in the waiting room. Whether the event is highly anticipated or highly dreaded, the last moments are hard. We can get impatient. We can worry. We can even start to lose hope. Waiting for Jesus' coming, we may find our faith is sometimes wavering. Maybe we have not been feeding it with God's word and sacraments. Maybe we have forgotten God's promises. Or our faith is tested by a crisis, or maybe even one crisis after another, and we start to doubt God's promises. Perhaps we have even been let down by a Christian leader or someone we respected. But God does not let go of us. Paul promises that God is able to strengthen you, confirm you, establish you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Christ Jesus. The gospel, we normally think of the gospel as only the good news of Jesus, but here it probably means the whole counsel of God, the whole history of God's salva- man's sin and God's salvation. The preaching of Jesus Christ here is specifically the gospel, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. This is where we get our strength. This is why you older children are going through confirmation classes. God is confirming you, firming you up in your faith. He is helping you to know what he has done for you, to understand the truth of his word so that you will believe and follow him all your life. This is why as adults we keep coming to church to hear the preaching of Jesus Christ so that we can be reminded that we are lost sinners who have been rescued from sin and death by Jesus. God's work has begun at Christmas and Easter. Now all we are waiting for is for Jesus to come and take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. And because the mystery has been revealed to us, because the angel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mary and set everything in motion, because that first Christmas did come and Jesus was born as a true human baby, because he died on the cross on Good Friday and rose from the grave on Easter, because all of that has been fulfilled, we can look forward to our final deliverance with confidence. The wait is almost over. The first present has been opened and God has saved the greatest joy for the last day when Jesus comes to take us to heaven. Because the mystery, and there's no better way to end this message than the way St. Paul ended his letter to the Romans. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the favor shown us in Christ and his incarnation, for faith to believe that nothing is impossible with him and that everything would be to us according to the word of the Most High, let us pray to the Lord. For faithful preachers of your gospel to bring about the obedience of faith by the mystery of Christ now revealed in the prophetic and apostolic scriptures. For Matthew Harrison, our synod president, Steve Turner, our district president, Richard Salcedo, our circuit visitor, and for the Holy Christian Church, that God would strengthen it in every place, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, its presidents, all legislatures and judges, and those newly elected to serve, that God would preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people, for peace among the nations of the earth, and that God would preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed, sedition, rebellion, and every evil, let us pray to the Lord. For all women with child and mothers with infant children, that God would grant them increasing happiness in their blessings. For all married couples, especially Joey Zimmerman and Tanya Craigle, who were married yesterday in a private ceremony, that 
the Lord would bless their union and grant them happiness together. For the lonely, depressed, and despairing, for the sick, the anxious, and the dying, for those who are in need of our prayer, uh, for Melvin Gosler, Milroy Raby, Orlin Kreese, and Arlene Namitz as they struggle with health concerns, for Rodney Kunz, Elaine Carlson, and Louis Hargens recovering from surgery, for Marianne Schnoor awaiting surgery, for Rory Plow, Earl Schultz, and Gilbert Nissen who have been hospitalized this past week, for all who are suffering or recovering from COVID-19 and from those, for those who are still in quarantine, and for those who mourn, uh, especially the family of Curtis Nepper, the brother of Alan Nepper, who passed away on Thursday, that they would take comfort in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who receive Christ's holy body and precious blood today, that they may eat and drink it in repentance and faith, in the unity of a true confession, and for a love and desire for the blessed sacrament this Christmas, let us pray to the Lord. O Most High, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You be seated. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. <laughs> 